تريد أنت أراك تحب عرسا ذات خدر أبت طلاقها الأكياس بتا تنام الدهر ويحك في غطيط بها حتى إذا مت انتبهتا فكم ذا أنت مخدوع وحتى متى لا ترعوي عنها وحتى أبا بكر دعوتك لو أجبت إلى ما فيه حظك لو عقلت إلى علم تكون به إماما مطاعا إن نهيت وإن أمرت ويجلو ما بعينك من غشاها ويهديك السبيل إذا ضللت وتحمل منه في ناديك تاجا ويكسوك الجمال إذا عريتا ينالك نفعه ما دمت حيا ويبقى ذكره لك إن ذهبتا هو العضب المهند ليس ينبو تصيب به مقاتل من أردتا وكنز لا تخاف عليه لصا خفيف الحمل يوجد حيث كنت إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه أمهات المؤمنين وعلى من اتبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh uh, This is uh, Kareem Abu Zaid and uh, we welcome you once again to uh, the final uh, lecture uh, review uh, basically uh, from the uh, Let's Pray the Prophet's Way uh, inshallah uh, before the test which will take place uh, this coming Saturday inshallah there will be a test this coming Saturday uh, so hopefully uh, you are studying and uh, this is a day brothers and sisters in Islam when we uh, review once uh, more time uh, give you a chance to ask questions if things were not clear uh, and, and so forth inshallah uh, as I uh, show the phone lines uh, we're going to start taking your phone calls as soon as you call us uh, but meanwhile uh, let me uh, share with you the list of the participants uh, the final list of the participants uh, so inshallah if you uh, registered but your name is not mentioned in that list uh, then uh, you can send the email uh, where you communicated your registration with us uh, and if we establish that you registered before time uh, then insha'Allah uh, uh, we will include you uh, on the list insha'Allah so here is the list of, of participants so far uh, let's pray the Prophet's way list of participants uh, let me see here uh, like I mentioned I will be taking your calls Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah Alhamdulillah, how are you doing? Alhamdulillah, my name is Joseph. Um, I have one quick question, brother. Your name is what? Uh, Joseph. Joseph, go ahead, Joseph. I'm a refresh to his mom. Yes, yeah, Joseph. So basically, my question is, like, lately I've been, I've been feeling like, I, I think I'm gay, but like, I don't know. Like, I'm not doing any actions that like, make me gay, but like, I'm just having thoughts, like, is the haram being gay? Well, uh, khair, Joseph, for um, uh, you know sharing this with us. But I would not, you know, disclose my name. Uh, hopefully, nobody is out there uh, know who you are. Uh, but uh, in general, uh, having the thought uh, or uh, you know uh, passing. Uh, over the idea uh, with yourself uh, is uh, nothing uh, is is you're not held accountable at all for that uh, in Islam 
uh, will only uh, hold accountable uh, Brother Yusuf uh, based on what we do with our actions. Uh, I would, uh, Brother Yusuf, advise you uh, not to entertain this idea. And uh, I want you I want you to take this into context of a test that you're being tested. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is, is testing you with these feelings and your job is to succeed in this test and the way to succeed uh, that you leave this world uh, inshallah after a long life with Iman uh, uh, while you're a man uh, okay. inshallah. So, so Iman? Yes Yusuf. So so what if like uh, you know I'm having the dreams and I go oh, oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, thank you very much, sir, for, you know, uh, being really, uh, I don't know how to call you, uh, but this is not a joke, you know. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, uh, here is the list of names that we have for the uh, competition. Uh, let's pray the Prophet's way. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, here is the list of names that we have for the competition, brothers and sisters in Islam. Uh, the brothers, if you can see your names there. Uh, Abdul Mubin, Mukhtar, Maryam, Al Mahjoub, uh, Khadija, uh, Sawa, uh, Saifuddin, Abu Bakr. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi sister. Um, yeah, my name is Nesba. I'm calling from New York. Uh, my question is, I've got two questions. Mm -hmm. um, first is, what's the difference between nafs and ruh? And um, how does one do the tazkiyah in nafs? And um, my second question is that as a lady, I have my family members, they're really influenced with this shaykh uh, who keeps telling them about the importance of zikr. Uh, and then he says that you need to wake up in the middle of the hajjad and you need to be saying like uh, constantly chanting the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, several, for several like minutes or maybe even close to an hour or so. So is there any deal from that? Hadid because he says that this is what Rasulullah did while he was in the Hira, uh, in the cave of Hira. So, uh, inshallah, those are my two questions. Jazakallah khair. Wa Sister Misbah, inshallah, I will answer you. Just keep watching. Those are very good questions. May Allah reward you. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, uh, Abdul Mubin Mukhtar Maryam, our local uh, sister Maryam here, uh, our brother. Uh, Frank's uh, daughter, Al uh, Mahjoub from Pittsburgh, Khadija uh, too, uh, Sister Sarah, Adji, uh, Amir Shafiq, and Abu Bakr Zubair. Uh, next on the list, uh, I hope you can see it here: Noura Rashid, Amina Egal, Zakaria Hussein. Uh, Ashiq bin Iqbal, Samira Beij, Abdul Mu'min Sulaiman, Abdullah Harun, uh, Amelia, and Imran. Imran Abdullah. Tayyip, moving forward, we have Patricia Khairil, Khairil Latif, Nidar Jamal, Ibrahim Khan, Ismail Riyadh, Anmar Mahmoud. Uh, Milad, our brother Milad from San Diego, Muhammad Dawood and Sharjil from London. Uh, and then we have Naila Khan, Aliu Ibrahim, Asya Abdul Rahman, Shahid Allah. Uh, okay, we'll continue the list from there. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Are you taking more questions? Yeah, name, state, and question, please. Okay, 
Jay, call from Canada. I don't see before. Levinson, I'll receive Mas. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Your name, brother? Uh, okay, that's fine, uh, brother. You didn't have by, you didn't have to. The question is going to ask you that he says that the Sahabis, the Rasulullah used to ask for forgiveness seventy times a day. The Quran specifically states to Rasulullah, even if you were to pray for them seventy times a day, they will still not be forgiven because the hypocrites. Are they talking only Allah Alam? Allah can give you some wrong. You got all talks bad about anybody such as a Ali. But Bukhari says in there it says that they for, uh, ask for forgiveness seven times a day. But the Quran specifically said, says, who is the Quran specifically asking for? Because not everybody just okay. ask for forgiveness for seven times a day. Okay, I will explain that, uh, dear brother, inshallah, bidnillah. Thank you. You're welcome. Jazakallah khair. Ahsanallahu alayhi. That's a very good question too. Uh, the brother is referring to the uh, mention of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, asking uh, forgiveness in Surah At-Tawbah. Istaghfir lahum aw la tastaghfir lahum in tastaghfir lahum sab'ina marra falan yaghfir allahu lahum. Uh, and uh, he is also quoting hadith uh, al-Bukhari uh, that the, uh, the, the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to count uh, up to 70 times uh, Astaghfirullah uh, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would be uttering uh, so they would count uh, the number of times the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would utter Astaghfirullah in one uh, majlis in one setting uh, it will be up to 70. Uh, now the brother is, is really uh, talking about uh, what is uh, I, I feel from his tone that uh, he want to uh, establish the idea that there is a contradiction uh, between the Quran and Al-Bukhari and please correct me because that's what I'm reading from your question uh, because obviously there is no contradiction between the two uh, he's basically uh, uh, referring to uh, the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam doing istighfar for 70 uh, times uh, and yet uh, Allah is telling him even if you do it for 70 times uh, those are two different uh, uh, areas my dear brother uh, uh, you see that the one in Surah At-Tawbah uh, talks about the companions uh, who did not join uh, uh, the battle of Tabuk uh, and those are the hypocrites uh, so uh, they are hypocrites uh, uh, and normally with the hypocrisy uh, especially if the hypocrisy has to do with your faith uh, with your belief system uh, a person uh, may have to uh, seriously repent from it and uh, you know re re renew his iman his faith uh, that is why istighfar uh, is not beneficial because uh, these individuals uh, to some extent, nullified the uh, uh, foundation of the religion, or way, one way or another. Uh, but the istighfar uh, which the Prophet وسلم, was doing uh, while he was sitting with his companions, uh, this is uh, the act of istighfar that uh, not related to a certain uh, shortcoming or a sin. Uh, in a way, istighfar also is a form of worship, uh, brothers and sisters in Islam, because it's a form of dhikr. Uh, so, uh, joining the, the two, uh, the one in Surah At-Tawbah uh, and the one uh, in Sahih al-Bukhari, uh, in the same context, is, is a mistake uh, to begin with. Uh, Al-Bukhari narrated a hadith that talks about uh, a whole different uh, scenario or context uh, 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 the Surah Al-Tawbah the chapter Al-Tawbah chapter 7th uh, in the Quran uh, talks about the hypocrites uh, who uh, intentionally did not uh, 
participate uh, in an act of worship at the time which is uh, participating in the battle of Tabuk uh, which was as mandatory as the Salah now uh, maybe they uh, did not join uh, intentionally and and they made it uh, they, they made juhud uh, denial uh, or, or rejection of the command of Allah knowingly and willfully uh, that is why uh, if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would ask uh, as many as 70 times uh, Allah to forgive them Allah will not because the forgiveness must come in the basis of uh, Tawheed Jazakallah Khairan Hopefully this is clear inshallah uh, Sister Misbah inshallah I'll, under, I'll answer your question bi'idhnillahi ta'ala So we have Naila Khan Alyu Ibrahim Asya Abdul Rahman Uh, Shahid uh, Bayan, uh, Sister Anisa, Alyu Mamadu, Muddassir Khan, Cameron, Cameron, and Bint Harun. That's next on the list. We have Fatuma Ibrahim. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Uh, and uh, uh, Tamar and Masih uh, from Toronto. Ahlan Tamar, how are you? Alhamdulillah. Uh, I just have a simple question. Uh, um, you mentioned this in one of the, the classes, but I cannot remember. Uh, in Qiyam al Layl, the Prophet used to recite, um, I wasn't sure if it was a surah or an ayah regular. I don't know if it was an ayah there, there was a, a specific ayah. I just wanted to know what that was again. So, what, what was the context? Uh, are you talking about the verse at the end of Surah Al Ma'idah? That he repeated it so many times? Yeah, yeah I think so. Okay, I got yes, you. Yes, yes. Okay, Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Brother Sheikh. I have a question regarding uh, shortening of the prayer as a Musafir. Okay. How many days of travel that he uh, he intends to travel that he shortens his uh, prayers and uh, if let's say he comes home and then he needs to go to work which is out of the state does, uh, and he stays two days at home so does that consider that he has to do uh, a shortening of salah? So uh, I'm sorry now, so, uh, I'm, I'm sorry uh, is it okay to tell us your name? It's free, you don't, if you don't want to say your name that's fine inshallah Your name? But my name is Yusuf from New York uh, brother Yusuf, uh, uh, so he traveled to another town and then he came back to his home. So you're asking, does he have to complete the Salah uh, uh, when he returned to his house? Uh, when, uh, when he's a Musafir, he's traveling to a different state. Well, that is understandable. But when he comes back to home and then he stays home and then go back to his job, which is in a different state. Okay, so that's, uh, just, just, yeah. to, just to answer your question in, uh, quickly, if he returns home, he needs to complete his salah and pray on time because he's no longer a traveler. So he only shorten and combine when he is a traveler. You see, this is a license which is given to the travelers. So when you come back home, even for two days, you still have to complete your salah. Jazakallah khair Yusuf. Ahsanallahu alayk. Jazakallah. Okay, uh, let me finish up this list, inshallah, then we'll uh, answer Sister Misbah. Uh, we have Nuwal, Muhammad Nishan, uh, Muntaha, Al Mahjoub, Ibtisam uh, Muhammad, uh, Hafsa Nimat, Hanan Muhammad, Muhammad Faizan, and Yusuf Nasir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. from New York. Ismail from New York. Go ahead, Ismail. Uh, I have a question regarding uh, like breastfeeding. Okay. If uh, yeah, if my wife is uh, pumping breast milk and giving it out, like donation, are the other children who drink from it my my uh, my daughter's brother and sister, or has to be directly from the breast? Jazakallah All right. Just, uh, th yes, they, they, it doesn't have to be from the breast. The milk is the substance which identify brotherhood and sisterhood from suckling, 
Brother Ismail. Jazakallah khair. Uh, okay, uh, Yusuf Nasser. Uh, this is it. Oh, we we'll have one more list here. Uh, Muzammil Ahmed, uh, Umar uh, Nimaj, Rakhia Ali, and we have uh, Marwa uh, Nadir, Asma Nadir, Muad Nadir, Nadir Ahmed Sheikh, Isaac uh, Ishaq or Isaac uh, Salah, Amir uh, Muhammad. Uh, one more, mashallah. Uh, Nur Ismat, Rihana uh, Muhammad, Maryam uh, Sulaiman, Muhammad Dawood, Usama Sulaiman, and uh, okay. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. Alhamdulillah, how are you doing? Good question for you. What is your name, brother? I'm sorry. Is the, is the, is, is the gym open tonight or they have practice? <laughs> is you calling me to ask me about the gym online? <laughs> it's open, yeah, it's open. Who's, who, who, who's this? This is Muhammad. This is one of the brothers that comes praise there, but sometimes I like to practice. I like to exercise a little bit over there. Yeah, it's open, Muhammad. It's it's open, inshallah, Muhammad. Jazakallah khair. Barakallah Brother Muhammad is... Oh, no problem. Brother Muhammad is our local brother who is calling me to ask whether the gym is open or not at CMCC. It's open, inshallah. Sabah Azhar, Salma Ahmed, Abdullah, Hamza, Sultana, Umama, Sulaiman, Muhammad Dawood, Maryam Sulaiman, Rihana, Muhammad, Noor, Ismat. Uh, okay. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Now, name, state, and question, please. Uh, Ahmed, I'm coming from Virginia. Yes, Ahmed. My question is uh, so, some, somebody says something about Supreme, like the Supreme shoes, Supreme shirt. Is this permissible? To so, 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 uh, Supreme so, so, so what again? Name is Supreme. Supreme what yeah. again? Supreme what again? Like Supreme shoes, Supreme shirts. Supreme. Brand. Oh, oh, you're talking that this is should be exclusive to Allah. That's what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's okay as long as you see Supreme. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the Supreme, right? You oh. can say Supreme yeah. that like uh, uh, Kareem, like my name, Kareem. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is Al. Kareem, you see the definite particle makes it the special one exclusive to Allah, uh, Brother Ahmad. Jazakallah khair. So you can say Yeah, you can, yes, 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 you can. Barakallah. Okay, Jazakallah khair. Uh, okay, uh, let me finish up here. Ahnaf uh, Rashiq Hassan, Hamid So Sina, Hanifa Barbar, Anwar Tulu, Umama Farhiya, Masudar Mula. Idris Akbar, Muhammad Judah, and uh, that should be it, no? Okay, we have some more. Uh, Muhammad Jalo, Kazi, Shafil, Ahmad, Abdul Rahman. So these are the names. We're talking about 76 participants, brothers and sisters in Islam, in the competition. Alhamdulillah, this is quite uh, impressive. Uh, uh, let me, I think I answered most of the questions except Sister Sabah. Uh, and Tamil and Masri, those two, uh, I will answer their questions, but let me pick up that caller here. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa This is Brother Duran from the Dallas area. Yes, Duran, how are you doing? Yeah, alhamdulillah, Shah. Shah, one question. Uh, if, you, uh, if you have a land for some years and then you decide to sell it, uh, do you pay Zaka on it? Because I heard, I mean, somebody was telling me I had to, after you sell it for so, I mean, you have it for so many years, you have to pay Zakat on it. Brother, brother Joran, when you uh, bought that land, uh, what was the intention? Uh, was it like an investment or you just wanted to buy and place your money there? Well, yeah, in the beginning, it might have been for, uh, for, for, I mean, to live on, but later on, I decided for investment. 
Okay, then you, you go ahead and sell it, and one time you pay Zakah one year on it, one hawl on it, one time, 2.5%. Okay, so you do have them to yes. get Zakah on it. Once you sell it, okay. once you sell it, you right. pay one hawl, one time, zakatul mal on it, 2.5%, brother Juran. Jazakallah khair. Ahsanallahu alayk. Barakallahu alayk. Okay. Uh, Sister Misbah, uh, she asked two big questions. That's why I, I wanted to save them till the last. Uh, and brother Tamir, uh, let me just see who we have here in the broadcast. Uh, I like to do that always, recognize those who come early. Sister Shiraf, Umm uh, Abdul Wahab, wa alaykum salam. This is Abu Bakr, uh, brother Abdullah Himari, wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, okay, uh, statics law can a woman who is ministering recite the Quran, she may recite the Quran, uh, but not from the Quran, uh, from something else, like from uh, one of the mediums, inshallah, but it's permissible. Uh, we have Fatima, wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh from Maryland, our sister Fatima, uh, sister Rahima, our local sister, wa alaykum salam. Uh, MashaAllah, Azim from Kosovo. MashaAllah, that's a long way. Good to have you. Uh, Azim Galis uh, Sharjil. Uh, uh, Inshallah, I can meet you in a person one day. Inshallah, bi idnillah. May Allah gather us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Uh, always ala ta'atihi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, this is mine again from New York. I'm sorry. Uh, I just want to add a clarification to my previous question regarding the breast milk. Okay. Um, so should should she not donate because she doesn't know who's the brothers and sisters, or is it haram, or is it okay to donate? I'm sorry, just this clarification. I would, Ismail. I would not advise it unless I know where this milk is going to. Uh, so at least you identify the individual. Uh, uh, and and you know the, the the scholars differed regarding how many times uh, the child uh, is to be fed uh, for the uh, brotherhood or the sisterhood from uh, suckling would be established. Some scholars mentioned three times, some others mentioned five times. So uh, in any rate, donating it to random uh, people may not be very good because uh, you may end up. Uh, you know, uh, uh, giving it to somebody that you don't know. It's it's better to give it to uh, individuals that you identify, uh, so that you know uh, uh, if they received at least three times, four times, five times, uh, that your children are brothers to them uh, or sisters to them in suckling. Okay, jazakallah khair. But it's 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 it's, it's permissible, Ismail, to do it. But do it in that manner that you, you know where the milk is going to. So this way you identify the individual. Barakallah feek. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullah. Aida wa alaikum assalamu Abdul Aziz. Abdullah Henry wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. What to say to someone who always pray alone and purpose leave the Salatul Jama'ah? Uh, give him nasiha, uh, brother uh, Mamadu, uh, Muhammadu, I'm sorry. Uh, advise him uh, not to do that and talk to him about the virtue of Salatul Jama'ah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam, Shakrim. Wa alaikum salam, how are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm good, how are you doing? The gym is open, okay? <laughs> is that what you're asking about the gym? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that one called. I know, I that know. Some, someone is someone called me uh, from uh, Colorado and he's asking, uh, Sheikh, is the gym is open or not? <laughs> right, go ahead. Yeah, I heard that. Funny. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So, so uh, with the Quran, we know the, the, that the Quran is a cure, right? So we have examples of the Quran curing like physical illnesses. Can the Quran cure mental illnesses as well? Uh, I'm sorry, what is your name? I, I forgot to ask. Salim. Salim. Oh, you're Salim, brother Salim. How are you doing, brother Salim? 
Yes, yes, Salim. Yes. Sorry, sorry. I didn't. Salim, uh, originally Salim, the, the Quran is actually the cure for the mental. You know, the, 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 the Quran actually cures the person mentally. It, it helps with the mental condition of the individual. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Ra'd, uh, Brother Salim, الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب Indeed, those uh, who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they find peace and tranquility in the remembrance of Allah Indeed, in the remembrance of Allah, one can find uh, serenity and tranquility. So, the uh, actually the the, the, the cure uh, regarding the Quran talks about the mental, the spiritual cure. Uh, the physical uh, is really something between medicine, you know, and and uh, and and uh, 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 the Quran. Uh, but we should not, as Muslims, rely on the Quran only. Uh, once it comes to uh, seeking uh, cure and remedy uh, from physical diseases. You got that? Jazakallah khair, Brother Salim. Barakallah fiq. Wa iyaakum. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah. So, Brother Mamadu, uh, I would advise you to advise this individual uh, regarding praying in jama'ah and the virtue of that. Uh, a lot of these brothers are unaware of the virtue of praying in Jama'a. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Safar, Safar Salman, calling from Murad, Minnesota. Safar, how are you doing? Uh, Alhamdulillah, how are you doing? Alhamdulillah, Safar. Doing good, Chef. Alhamdulillah, Allahumma laka alhamdulillah. Chef, uh, is it permissible to pray inside a non Muslim's home? Why not? As long as you're not praying towards a picture, uh, you're not praying towards an icon of shirk, and they allow you, and you seek the qibla, certainly you can pray, that's a good da'wah. Jazakallah khair. Wa iyaakum safar. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh Nakarim. Alhamdulillah. How are you, brother? Alhamdulillah, it's me, brother uh, Neil Castro Abdurrahman from Chicago. Brother Abdurrahman, how are you doing? Alhamdulillah, Sheikhna. Alhamdulillah, good to hear you. Sheikh Ibrahim is in town, huh? Uh, Wallahi, Sheikhna, I am not aware of it. Yeah, okay, Sheikh. Uh, you just mentioned that just now, Barakallahu Fiqh. Inshallah, go ahead, Inshallah. Yeah, Sheikhna, well, I don't have a question, but I just wanted to ask you for a request. I have written an email to the uh, CMTC email to you, uh, forward it to you, and hopefully if you can forward it to Sheikhna Osman, uh, and uh, it's a, a, a personal matter, and I have done that already almost, it's been almost two weeks since I emailed you, but I have not received a response, and I would kindly appreciate it if you can uh, they have the chance to take a look at my email, inshallah. Abdul Rahman, can. can you do me a favor? Just uh, send it one more, resend it one more time, and inshallah tonight I will look at it. Inshallah. Nah, inshallah, Sheikh. Nah, I will do it. Okay. Wa fi wa fi. Amin, amin, Jazakallah khair, Abdul Rahman. Barakallah fi. Salamu alaikum. So, uh, let me answer, sister. Inshallah, the phone lines. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, how are you doing? Yes, that's me, yes. Assalamu alaikum. I heard you one day you talking about the talk, about a home mortgage and you say only one company in California has uh, uh, has uh, very correct uh, very correct for Islamic way so do you know if that company take it for other people from other states no no they don't you have to build your own system 
uh, I'm sorry. What is your name, brother? Just to uh, uh, call you with your name, if you if you if you choose to. If not, don't worry about it. Okay, but, but my name is Abdul Razak from Texas, bro. Brother Abdul Razak, uh, the, the, the password why this company is legitimate is the source of the money. Uh, the way that they do it, they uh, basically do some sort of getting together and everybody uh, put a certain amount of money and everybody takes his turn uh, buying the house. So the money is coming from the uh, participants is not coming from a bank conventional bank that's why it's lawful that is why it's lawful uh, any other mean I am 100% uh, skeptical about it uh, even though they may tweak uh, and, and, and draw the contract in a way that uh, but still uh, even if you know that the source of their uh, uh, financing is a conventional bank uh, rest assured that themselves are heavily indulged in usury uh, because brother Abdul Razak the financial system in America is a federal system the banks have to abide by have to follow uh, and if they become uh, violators if they violate uh, the rules of banking which is federal uh, they get in trouble uh, we know that it's always based on interest ف, uh, to answer your question, the company is called Bil Amin. Uh, I'm no member. I, I don't work for them. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know anybody from them, quite frankly. Uh, uh, but they only exclusive to California. Uh, but Alhamdulillah, they have already a developed formula uh, to be replicated, to be uh, repeated in other states. And I think that's what we should do. If you can bring a, a group of brothers. Uh, and there are brothers who did this in Maryland. I know brothers who did this in Maryland and other brothers who did this in other states. They replicated the same process uh, somewhere else. Jazakallah khair, brother Abdul Razak. Jazakallah khair, alhamdulillah. Allah has been the answer for me. Ameen. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Sister uh, Misbah, uh, the scholars differed uh, uh, regarding the uh, difference between the ruh and the nafs. Uh, first of all, let's begin with this. Uh, in Islam, we have, or in the Arabic language, uh, we have terms which the scholars uh, describe them to be al-fadun mushtaraka. Uh, uh, terms that are joined or associated like al Islam wal Iman, Islam and Iman, uh, like uh, Zakah, Sadaqa, like Zakah, Sadaqa, like uh, Prophet and a Messenger, Prophet and a Messenger. All of these are terms that are. Uh, uh, joint, associated. They have, uh, they refer to the same thing, like nafs and ruh. Uh, here's what Sheikh Al Islam said about this, about those uh, mutual terms, uh, terms with mutual uh, connection or connotations. إذا اجتمع افترقا وإذا افترقا اجتمع. When they are mentioned in the same sentence then they would separate in meanings each one of them would carry a different meaning would uh, 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 imply a different meaning but if they are mentioned separately they could mean the same thing they may mean the same thing like if I say nafs it means ruh if I say ruh it means nafs if I say Islam it means iman if I say Iman, it means Islam. Right? That's what I mean. This is if they are mentioned separately. But let's say I put a sentence like this. Indeed, the nafs and the ruh. Now you have to find two meanings. Because the fact that they were mentioned next to one another, that means they have to separate in meaning. Now, the scholars, this is the uh, most uh, perfect 
uh, explanation that in nafs, uh, in reference to the wicked side, wicked side, uh, ruh when it becomes uh, uh, righteous and pious, ruh is the positive side, in nafs is the wicked. This is one explanation, by the way. This is one way to do it. Some others said when it's inside the body, it's called nafs. When it leaves the body, it's called ruh. Uh, uh, but, you know, uh, answering this, uh, very easy, because the angel of death would call, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the evidence for this is very easy. يَا أَيَّتُهَا النَّفْسُ الطَّيِّبَةِ يَا أَيَّتُهَا النَّفْسُ الْمُطْمَئِنَّ ف, uh, In a way, uh, you know, they mean different things. Uh, when they are joined together. Uh, the subject of Tazkiyah to Nafs, dear sister, uh, is, uh, you know, a subject that is really uh, uh, busy and, and rich in contents and, and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it's, a, it's a very busy subject, you know, it's a very busy, uh, uh, but in general, once we come to Tazkiyah to Nafs, our Nafs has some defects. Some people have, um, you know, hastiness. Some people get angry easily. They don't have control over themselves. Uh, some people uh, have the desire to withhold, low stinginess. Uh, and so forth. So these are uh, qualities that sometimes our parents or the uh, environment where we were brought up did not take care of it. Did not take care of it. Like, for example, your child, you ask him to share something and he is holding the toys and he doesn't want to share whatsoever with anybody. Now, parents out of love for that child, they would condone that. They would compliment that. Actually, you're making a big mistake. You're supposed to do tarbiyah in this area. What I'm trying to say is, some of the children, uh, because of the lack of tarbiyah, uh, they end up uh, developing uh, uh, generating first a uh, while in childhood and developing uh, negative attributes or negative characteristic of the nafs. Now, the way that you do this later on is you apply the guidance. You apply the guidance. You come to the guidance if you're stingy. Uh, then you read all the text that talks about the virtues of spending fi sabilillah. If, if, if you, if you uh, apply the, uh, you know, if you, if you talk about hastiness, uh, then you, you come into uh, maybe using hastiness in, in matters of, of Iman, in matters of faith, in matters of belief, uh, and so forth, brothers and sisters in Islam. So this is once it comes to the uh, qualities of the nafs. So uh, by the application and the implementation of the guidance, you will certainly uh, be able to purify your nafs, get rid of the bad traits or the bad uh, attributes of the nafs and replace it with good attributes. I want to join this question with the question of the uh, uh, sheikh who is uh, leading uh, your family uh, into uh, mystic uh, practices, uh, brothers and sisters in Islam. Uh, you know, the purification of the nafs is one of the objectives of Islam. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the purification of the soul is one of the higher aims of the religion of Islam. As a matter of fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the enemy, which is the worst, is the nafs. And, and, and for your information, shaitan works on what's on the nafs. You see, uh, shaitan doesn't invent uh, uh, an evil act for you to do. No. Shaitan comes to you, what do you like, money? 
okay let's earn money from haram uh, what do you want uh, women okay uh, men okay so he's gonna play your game he's gonna play your game so shaitan is is like uh, uh, utilizes uh, the defects of the nafs yeah you get that so really really the main enemy if you manage to combat is the nafs inside you uh, the problem with the nafs is is an enemy that sleeps with you inside you i mean in the sense of yeah, when you eat you feed your nafs when you drink you uh, you understand that now here is the thing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed enough guidance enough guidance to help us purify our nafs purify our souls we have enough praying five times a day observing the nawafil praying tahajjud but now these mystic people the sufi extreme sufis who introduce heretical rituals like the one that you mentioned into the religion without an evidence this is we say no to that why because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam warned against that he said man ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fa huwa rad whoever introduces an act into this religion which is not part of it it will not be accepted it will be rejected and 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 the problem with this brothers and sisters in islam the prophet said kullu bid'atin dalalah everything that you introduce into islam which is not part of it it will be a cause of misguidance wa kullu dalalatin fin nar wa kullu dalalatin fin nar uh, uh, I read something uh, very interesting the other day uh, on Facebook. Uh, I think the brother, his name is uh, Wasim. Uh, he he posted it. Uh, I, I really loved it. He said, the mystic Sufis, which is the extreme Sufis, the people who are into that, uh, you know, they normally start with renouncing this world. Meaning, you know, there is no world. Uh, give up this world completely which is beautiful by the way i mean we, we shouldn't cling to the world we shouldn't you know try to uh, you know we should only employ the world to get the hereafter that's what we should do that you employ this world uh, utilize this world uh, in order to gain the hereafter if you have money then spend that money in a good cause so that this money will be uh, a source of hasanat for you in the day of if you have knowledge share the so forth uh, then later on they decided to cancel out this world and they said Allah is the entire world and, and, and then they ended up saying well Allah goes into the saints the people who uh, can uh, receive Allah will uh, in their uh, physical body are the saints so let's pray to the saints oh. كل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. Warn your parents, dear sister, Miss Ba, against that. You see, you may not see the damages of of the bid'ah right away, but it will happen sooner or later. جزاك الله خيرا. Hopefully, this helps. إن شاء الله. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. السلام عليكم. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, I'm a newcomer to Islam. I used to be Islamophobic for three years, but I've become Sunnah. I haven't given up Muslim for two and a half months. I have a question. Okay. So I was chatting with the one Muslim that I know, and he said, uh, and it was in an app called Discord, and we were just talking. And then a book just came on. He's like, hey, I want to know about Islam and all this. And all that, and he said, "Oh, sorry, we're not allowed to respect gaffers." And then he gave, the, and I said, so "Why? Why do you not respect gaffers? Because we're supposed to. Um, just how else will we give it them dawah and everything like that? I was a gaffer, and I, like, I, how, and I became Muslim because Muslims treated me nice, and they told me about Islam and whatever. But he showed me lots of evidence saying you're not allowed to." Be nice to uh, La ilaha illallah. This is. A, I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, brother. This is an ignorant person, 
uh, he lacks the knowledge and he has courage to speak without knowledge. Uh, you know, both. Uh, this is what you call, uh, you know, uh, 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 intentional ignorance. You know, when you lack the knowledge uh, about something uh, and uh, you uh, advocate for that and, and you try to manipulate some text in the Quran and take it out of its context to justify uh, your uh, uh, wrong approach. I'm telling you, my brother, uh, Islam commands us to be nice to everybody, to be nice to everybody, to be friendly to everybody. The only time you're supposed to be harsh and mean in a battlefield, in a battlefield, in, uh, in, in a declared war between you and the, but other than that, absolutely not, absolutely not. This is uh, not right. What he told you is not right. Please give da'wah to as many as you want and respect these non-Muslims and give them as much attention as you, uh, uh, you can. Jazakallah khairan, barakallah feek. Okay, I, sorry, I just want to add, just want to take one. He said that, so I gave him lots of verses saying, oh, Islam, it says to teach uh, people like ha to respect non-Muslims, non lies the Quran verses I gave him hadith and stuff. He told me the verses which are later in the Quran, they cancel out the, the verses which were earlier in the Quran. That's what he told me. Like I showed him something from chapter 5 and then he gave me something from chapter 48 and he said 48 cancels out 5. Okay, uh, uh, in, in general, uh, the, the, the concept of verses abrogating, that's how we call it, abrogation, uh, not canceling out, abrogation. Uh, abrogating the ruling of another verse, this happened in the Quran in multiple ways, in, in many ways. Uh, but in general, all the verses which talks about being harsh, being mean to non-Muslims is in the battlefield. We all know that. Or somebody who has some sort of animosity against Islam and he uses, you know, platforms like this one and, and you know, you can may call him and, and just be mean to him that you shouldn't do this about Islam, you shouldn't talk bad about Muslims and so forth. But in no way, in no way, uh, you're supposed to treat a non-Muslim uh, in a harsh way uh, apart from the battleground. Uh, whether the verse is revealed uh, very early in Mecca or the latest verse in Medina. Uh, uh, take it from me, brother. Uh, I studied the Quran. Jazakallah khair. Barakallah fi. Wa alaykum as salam. Wa alaykum as wa barakatuh. It's really absurd for a Muslim to say that. Uh, so how are we going to give da'wah to non-Muslims? You know, uh, that's... <laughs> Uh, that's a twisted understanding. You know, they deserve da'wah. Some, someone who was not born a Muslim, he never heard of Islam. Doesn't he deserve to hear about Islam from you? And doesn't he deserve uh, uh, a good way of giving da'wah to him? Come on. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum um, my name is Sabira. I'm from San Antonio, Texas. Yes, sir, sir Sabira. Um, How are you? I have, I have uh, two questions. Uh, the first one is, is that um, there's a job I want to take, and um, the job says that they will pay for the um, tuition um, as long as I keep a contract with the job for one year. But if the if the contract breaks after the one year, like let's say I decide to leave early, then what they will do is they will apply the tuition with interest. Is that like a haram agreement? Because of the it is, risk of RIPA? Yeah, it is. So who, who will uh, break the contract? You or them? Me. It's up to me. So uh simply uh, you're, you're gonna take so much money from them right is that what we're talking about in in lieu of that job or what oh you have to have like a certain amount of education and before you start the job so they pay for the education and 
a bond agreement that you do the contract, you stay with the company for one year, and then when you're with the company for one year, if you leave after the one year, there's no payment of the As tuition they paid for. It. Sister Samira, I, I think I got the picture. Uh, as long as you're positive that you will maintain the job until you pay off uh, that loan without interest, with zero interest, it's permissible. But if you know that this job is not going to last for you, then I wouldn't do it. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, I have a, um, Jeff, I have one more question. Um, I have a family member, my sister. Uh, she's not Muslim, but she's a devout Christian, and she asked me um, a question about how do we view this in Islam, and I just didn't know how to answer her. How to review? She asked, um, she said that... Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, she said that her, um, her aunt has, like, does witchcraft, and she has to live with her aunt. And so she basically staying there because of her hardship she's going through. And she doesn't have anywhere to go, but she did not know that, you know, our aunt is doing witchcraft. She found something in her closet. And so she like basically asked me like, you know, uh, what does Islam believe about that? And I told her I would leave, but honestly I am, um, if she's in a difficult situation, then I wouldn't know. So I wanted to get the hook on that. It's uh, your answer is absolutely correct, dear sister. Uh, but again, if she has nowhere to go, uh, maybe she can create that little roomy uh, seclusion uh, and lessen as much interaction as possible with her auntie, because it's very dangerous on her. You know uh, what she's doing. And um, you, you said that she's 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 a Christian, right? She's a devout Christian, right? Yeah, she's a Christian, and we were talking about it. So yeah, can you? Um, she asked me questions. Maybe you, know? maybe you can. She asked me advice. Maybe you can teach her some of the uh, adhkar in, in the Quran. Maybe that and and let her know their meanings, like you know the the ruqya. Teach her the ruqya. Maybe okay. that will that will be a good attraction for her to uh, come to Islam, inshallah. Barakallah fiki. Okay, inshallah. Jazakallah. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullah. Brother Tamir al-Masri, uh, the last question here, and then I will take some questions from the uh, the chat, so this way I'm, I'm, I'm balancing. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa recited one night the last, the verse, uh, the third verse from the last uh, of Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter 5. ما قلت لهم إن تعذبهم فإنهم عبادك وإن تغفر لهم فإنك أنت العزيز الحكيم. The Prophet kept repeating that if you chastise them they are your slaves and if you forgive them you are Almighty, all wise. That is the verse that he kept repeating. Okay, Omar Hassan, alaykum salam. Then Franklin, what does Allah say to respect non-Muslims. We answer that. Um, okay, watching from Virginia, Ramotu, alaykum salam, Sister Fatuma. How, uh, okay, uh, can you do a lecture on how to do tarbiyah, inshallah, of the, of the children? We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that one day. Uh, we have Abdullah Uda, Abdullah Uda from Minnesota. What's the correct? amount of food to donate for Zakatul Fitr. Zakatul Fitr is not here yet. Inshallah, we're going to talk about this when Ramadan approaches. Uh, Sam from Sri Lanka. Uh, Miss Bah. Uh, yes, I un answered you, sister, Inshallah. And maybe that's a very good subject, sister Miss Bah. Inshallah, we'll talk about it more. Wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bint Eve about things for witnessing contract or signing contract about the interest taken or receiving there is a hadith that all choose but uh, I guess brother Abdullah is is answering you uh, but this is not a pure contract brother Abdullah this is not a pure contract uh, so I would not apply that to the rule there uh, okay shared meaning uh, Hassan Sheikh okay El Mahjoub good to have you El Mahjoub Anas uh, only on call questions or chat. Uh, I guess you. I'm reading your thing here. Uh, Yami uh, bint Eve. Um, uh, 
uh, interest on the tuition okay salam from UK uh, Neil we answer that Neil good to have you hopefully I get your email inshallah tonight uh, okay uh, I think I'm, I'm done here my admin just sent me another question let me look at it uh, Sheikh, I see somebody insulting Aisha, our mother. Am I allowed to beat him up? I wouldn't beat him up and get in trouble. I would uh, give him da'wah, and if he doesn't respond, uh, then boycott that person. Uh, brother uh, Khalafi Salafi, mashallah. Uh, so I would not beat him up. This will get you in trouble, brother. Uh, what I would do is uh, give him da'wah, ask him to respect our mother. Uh, tell him that this is like this is your mother and you're insulting your mother let him know how much love you have for your mother Aisha radiallahu anha in a respectful way if he insists then uh, boycott the person Jazakumullah uh, khairan brothers and sisters in Islam I love you all for the sake of Allah uh, there is one last advertisement here which is this one uh, please look forward to Sunday uh, myself and Dr. Bilal Phillips uh, will be covering the subject of invoking the dead uh, the recent uh, fitna uh, that we have which we have to address brothers and sisters in Islam uh, this is something that you cannot you cannot be silent about uh, this is uh, attacking uh, the foundation of the religion and confusing the layman's regarding uh, basics of Islam and we are not too silent about it uh, Insha'Allah we will try to address it in uh, academic way ta'ala. Join us this Sunday, March 7 at 12.15 p.m. Mountain Standard Time Insha'Allah uh, I'm still going to see you on, uh, on Wednesday uh, We have Surah Sabah this week Insha'Allah the Maqasidic Tafsir And also Thursday we're going to have a question and answer session again I love you all for the sake of Allah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh وتنحت جسمك الساعات نحتا وتدعوك المنون دعاء صدق ألا يا صاح أنت أريد أنت أراك تحب عرسا ذات خدر أبت طلاقها الأكياس بتا تنام الدهر ويحك في غطيط بها حتى إذا مت انتبهتا فكم ذا أنت مخدوع وحتى متى لا ترعوي عنها وحتى أبا بكر دعوتك لو أجبت إلى ما فيه حظك لو عقلت 